I'll open the door. Where am I? Console. Where Lance was held. Oh! Can I not go through? It won't let me through. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Thanks for the letter. Wait, am I done? Hmm. Oh, shit. Did something happen? Oh, something. That big head knocked me out cold. What? No wonder you took so long. Are you okay? I could have died easily. But more importantly... No. Forget it. What? There was another corpse. I think one of the servants. Been dead a few months. A few months? Isn't that kind of odd? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not like he got stuck there and couldn't get out. He was clearly murdered with a knife. What a ridiculous place. I never wanted to come somewhere so shady. What about it is shady? Since when are there castles in this country? I thought something was up the moment my boss told me about the castle tour. Then I found out it's the mansion of some European guy from the colonial era. And it's got a history of Native American persecution to boot. You can't open <sighs> this kind of place to the public. You wouldn't get a tourist trap, you'd get a lawsuit. The tribes that got persecuted here are still around. What was that Brendan guy even thinking? Guess we'll never know now. If you were suspicious, then why did you come? Because Helena wanted to. But had I known it was this bad, no way. I wouldn't want her to learn this kind of bloody history. With a month off, I could have taken her anywhere. But I chose here. And then this happens. So, it was for Helena. You never seemed to pay her much mind, so I thought you didn't even like her, honestly. I wanted to pay her more attention, but I couldn't. My subordinate kept calling so much, I couldn't catch a break. Detectives have it rough. They're still cool, though. I'm on vacation, so I'm just a plain old guy right now. Come on, let's go. Still. Wait, no, 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 hang on. Yeah! Sweet! He's down to the waterway. Awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can't go with David into the rooms of the corpses. That's fine, I just now know it's there. That's fine, that's all I wanted to know. K Keith, are you going in there? Can't I? Well, uh... Don't tell me you're afraid. When I was a kid, this wild dog chased me around for like an hour. For such a big guy, you're really a wimp. Dude, Keith, calm down. Come, come on. Calm down and come on. So it was a cop, it was a between the two. You can't go inside. Okay, well. Are you... All you want to hear is... A right one. You're more heartless than I thought, David. Oh, fucking Christ, why? Is he behind there? I don't, don't know. Don't mind him. Let's go. Your mother's crying down in hell, you know. Dude, that's, that's low. Can't you hear your mother's pitiful wails? David, don't. Why did my dear Davy leave me alone? I don't want to be alone. Please don't leave me alone. Davy, oh Davy. <laughs> Calm down. Don't listen to him. David, doesn't it hurt leaving your mother all by herself? A real thoughtful son. He'd go to be by her side right away. 
David? Or do you feel relieved? To hell with that weak woman who always clung to you. No. I won't let him talk like that. Don't, Settle David. down. Don't open that door. Let go! No. You stupid brat. Okay. You don't listen to a word, do you? Never listens, never learns. Wants to put your old man through a lot of trouble. What's that? I said your father must have had it real hard with you. Jumping into danger alone, following when I tell you to stay. That's not being a brat. I don't know what is. Say that one more time. Brat. It's not just your eyes that are busted, but your ears too. Or is it your head to blame? Getting riled up over every little thing. I face the crooked man. Shut up. Punching me will calm you down. Then go ahead. Let's go. That was a fun detour. Oh, he's still pissed. Okay, well. Anyway. Ah! Bogus. <laughs> what? The large crossbow touched the table, opened the door, cut a wire which fired it. Oh my god. There was stuck in the door, there's a small key attached. See? See? So what happens if you just walk in the door? Where are you going, David? Almost killing yourself. Granted, I knocked, I, you know, axed the door question and you know, got the key that way, but still, I'm a detective. I have reasons to do that, I guess. I love walking upstairs. Oh no. Hey there, David. What are you looking up at? Look down below. Damn. Ah. <gasps> David! Ah, I finally got you snared. That detective was a bit too perceptive earlier. Killing you would put me at a big advantage. A critical hit to the detective. Oh, this is getting good. I don't like this. Ah! Yes? Exactly. This may sting a bit, David, but not for long. Ah, uh, fuck. Now hurry, Batman. Robin's gonna be a canary. God damn it! I didn't move. Oh, fuck. Uh, tear down the curtain. Uh, item, curtain. Wear it. Oh my god. What the hell? Go over the drum. Ah, fuck my life. Not stairs, anything but stairs. Hello? Oh god, oh god, oh no. Oh fuck, really? Only two minutes? God damn it. Ah. Nope, fuck.
Thank God. Okay. Wow. Oh my God. That was. Oh. Oh no. Wait. What? No. I was. What? Keith. Hello. What? Ugh. Ow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess. But I think I got a bump on my head just now. Sorry. Good. You go back to the room. If this happens again, I can't afford to save you. I mean, you don't know that. Sorry. It's my own stupidity to blame. I mean, no, you just dropped in a hole. I don't know how That's not the problem. If anything happens to you, I'm the one left with a crying Shirley. Well, sensitivity is not your thing. Isn't there anyone who'd cry for you? Maybe not anymore. Huh? Still want to tag along? Yeah. Do what you like. I'm exhausted. What is the purpose to any of this? Okay. Oh. Oh. Wait, I thought Patel was supposed to help. Ah, uh, no, the towel is supposed to help, right? Fuck. Ah. Uh, wait. No, he's still at a hundred. Yeah, I don't like this. Don't act like you didn't know. It's just the way it goes. Not my fault. What? Keith, let's rest a little. If you don't take a break, you're going to- This is a bad time to talk about taking breaks in a room written with heavy blood written on the walls! Shut up. This isn't the time. Shut up. I'm tired, okay? Let me rest. Or are you gonna drag around an exhausted citizen, detective? Oh. Lend me your lighter. You've got one smoke to rest. Is that guy anyway? How does he know about my mom and Shirley's past? It's really disturbing. David, did you celebrate your birthday with Shirley last month, or was it with Paul and Marion? Oh, I scheduled a meal with Shirley, then celebrated with Paul and Marion the other. Huh? Did I ever tell you my friends' names? Sorry about your mother. Benjamin's are like a landmine. One misstep means trouble. What the hell's happening? But I guess they don't teach you how to dodge landmines in flight school, huh? What the hell is happening? What? Oh, and you want to toughen your stomach for anchovies and liver. I mean, unless you want younger girls thinking that's cute or whatever. Hold on a second. What do you know about my mom, too? And my friends in school? I never told you any of that, right? Keep this between us. But working as a detective for 15 years, you get to know stuff. Like what someone's done in the past, just by looking at their faces. That is such bullshit! No, 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 no. Maybe that big-headed freak is the same way. I, no, this is, that's, that is a stupid explanation. No. You, you're kidding, right? You think I'm kidding? Yes! You're a real sucker. 
Take care you don't get swindled someday. What's this about? What do you know all about me? You were taken to the police after the incident with your mother. Remember the detective who questioned you? That was him? I was pretty dazed at the time, so I don't really remember. But it wasn't you, was it? Eric Simpson, my subordinate. It was only an attempted crime, so he was the only one to handle you. And you know, he's got a real messy desk. He lets case files and they like pile up so high they even topple over onto my desk. I saw some files on you among them. Your history, your family, that kind of info. And your mother's diagnosis. Boy, that's a breach of privacy if I've ever seen one. Oh, and the ones who verified your identity were your friends Paul and Mary and Martin. I remember them well. Especially because that Paul guy made a huge ruckus at the station. He was the one that ate too many chili dogs too, right? And then the anchovies. Oh yeah, I mentioned that at dinner. But I didn't tell you I hated liver, did I? I hate anchovies myself. And I hate liver. <laughs> That's all. Why did you make a guess for that one? Because you're stupid enough that I thought it'd fool you. <laughs> That's so rude! If you know so much about me, why didn't you say so when we first met? Because I was suspicious of you. Huh? Me? Why? A year and a half ago, you found a hang body in an abandoned house in another state. The state police came to us trying to determine the guy's identity. So he did report that. That's when I read your testimony, and it was real sketchy. Ah! Uh, what? The crooked man led me to the house? Come on, that's totally believable. Sketchy? Why? I understand you were looking for the guy who formerly lived in your apartment, but how did you track him down without even knowing his name or what he looked like? Said you followed notes, but when you were asked to show him, you said you lost them. You said you shot a man in the house, but there was no gunpowder on the gun, no drop cartridges, most importantly, nobody to shoot. And then you just happened to find that former tenant's corpse. You gotta know that's suspicious. I mean, just slightly, I guess. B but it's true. I was led there by the notes he wrote. Once I found the body and called the police, I realized they were gone. And I did shoot someone, but I'm not sure if it was a person. As you testified. But I guess that doesn't matter so much now. I was wary of you because of what you could have done. I didn't want to leave Helena with a madman. If you did anything even a little weird, I was going to turn around and take my wife home. Do you still distrust me? When we first met on the boat, I intentionally told you that I was a detective. Somebody with something to hide would be alarmed. But then you just said cool, so I was a bit less wary. You might be crazy for all I know, but you haven't shown any sign of being dangerous. Listen, everyone's got bad stuff in their past. For somebody who shouldn't know it to dig it up and use it against you, that agitate and anger most people. He knows that well. He's showing off what he knows to upset all of you and control your actions. He's done it to you, to Richard, to Lance. Lance too? He's an ex-journalist. Took photos of that job too. When he published articles, he signed his photos with LK. He investigated the state police during a sexual assault and murder case three years back, but went too far. The victim's family and civil liberties group attacked him for invasion of privacy, and he was driven out of journalism. Oh. How do you know about all that, Keith? Doesn't matter. Well, I understand that those are the guy's methods, but how does he know all of our pasts in the first place? The boogeyman lives in your closet, right? So, he's always watching. But it's just... Wow, you just jumped right to that. Watching when you nearly killed your mother. Watching when you were snuggling with your wife in bed. D don't make threats like that. He's only human. The appearance, the weapon, the info, it's all just to scare us. You're taking it pretty well, though. No shitting. It's all cheap tactics. It's not going to scare me. Yep, that's our detective. Nothing scares him, even though his wife might be in danger. Still calm. <laughs> if I let myself be shaken, you'd all follow suit. I can't protect anyone if I get distracted. A detective doesn't just go fishing for corpses. I've got my lousy pride and my duty. I can't just watch while someone kills people with a grin on their face. Never mind the fact he killed someone at the beginning and I didn't do anything. But yeah, it's semantics. 
even if you're forsaking someone important to you? What are you trying to say? There's a big gap between your ideal and what you really want. It's contradictory. Isn't that painful for you? Hmm. I wanted to be a pilot, but thinking about it now, I think I was just too stubborn to see anything else. So? You'll understand someday. <laughs> wow. Thinking of taking a nap here? Let's go. Keith, those things you said before, were you trying to make me angry? <sighs> I don't intend on telling anyone your history, nor your family problems. Sorry if you're still pissed. I just didn't want you to open the fucking door. No, it's fine. I guess I am kind of a brat. Eh, not as bad as Sophie. That's for fucking sure. Good God, that was long. Oh boy. I'm dying again. Please forgive me. No one can hear me. I am fabricating who I'm going to kill. Okay, wait. Oh my god! What the fuck is that? Looking closer, the frame is raised a little. Keith. What? Oh! Thank you. I didn't really want to just walk right in, but okay. Just down the locked door. Oh, I have no clue. A painting. Oh God, what is that? The Virgin Mary, that's just creepy. The Bible. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Oh, okay, whatever. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Oh, whoa. There's more. Oh, there's more. There's so much more. Okay. What the fuck? Oh my god, I don't like this. Scrap paper and notebook on the table. Bible passages that look like they were written by a kid, something's written on the margins. There can't be anything like limbo. Mom and Dad says that since I haven't been baptized just yet, if I die, I'll go to limbo. But there can't be limbo. I don't want to go to limbo. I hate this meditation room, too. And I really hate these Bible passages, but it's much better than the closet. I really, really hate the closet. That's why I think every time I yell, I'm yell, i yelled at and go in there. That's why That's why I think every single time I, I get yelled at, I'm yelled at and go in there. But just do the same things again and go back in there. Why am I in the dark, cramped closet, I wonder? If I stay here forever, I wonder if I'll turn into a monster. Like a movie monster who kills his mom and dad and messes up this whole house. <laughs> Forgot to swallow. When I leave the closet, I'm just me. I couldn't become a monster. I couldn't. So I always apologize to mom and dad. I'm sorry I was bad. I love you more than anyone in the world. Hello? Hey, stop that, would you? What? Huh? Stop that thing. It's hurting my ears. What does? Your phone! I hate hearing phones ring. It's yours, right? Make it stop already! Calm down! Make it stop! Calm down! Please! Where are you hearing a phone ringing? There's no phone ringing. In fact, I think I lost my cell phone earlier. So please, calm down. Where is that coming from then? I hate it. I hate the sounds of phones. Why? Because it always brings bad news. Oh my god, what the hell? Stop! Excuse me. Just, god, make it stop, please. I can't take much more of this. 
Oh my god, stop the phone. Thank Bearing you. here. Yes, that's right. I'll be there. Okay, something bad just happened. I mean, obviously. Hello, Dr. Mr. Baring, sorry to have called you. It's fine, I think. Your wife said she couldn't look, but we need you to confirm. Confirm what? It's my son. Oh my fucking god, are you kidding me? What happened? Are you sure? He's wearing the clothes from this morning. My wife sewed his name on them. Todd Baring. Check behind the neck. You have my deepest condolences. What happened? Sign here. We'll send you a pamphlet for a mortician. Refer to it if you wish. What happened? Someone tell me what happened. Thank you. There's a nurse waiting outside. Tell them if you need any help. Now, please excuse me. I need someone to help me find the plot of what happened here. Hello? Doctor? Okay, well, fuck my life. What? Helen. It's me. Hey, Keith, you off motoring somewhere? No, my son just died. I'm in the morgue. What do you, you want? You gotta hurry. The suspect's on the move. Head for Wellington Street. Got it? His kid just died! Don't. 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 Don't! Don't! Where are you going? Don't go. Stay with me. Fucking god, turn it off. Oh my god. Ugh. Christ on the cracker, god damn it. Helena. Please don't leave without telling me. It makes me worry. Oh, like you left her in the morgue with their with your dead son's body? Yeah, that's great. It's been a year now. <sighs> you always stayed with me. You always supported me. But I can't do it. I can't stop the tears. You got back on your feet. But I... I can't do anything but cling to you, but I can't drag you down with my weakness anymore, so... You know what I thought when I saw his body? I thought I failed. Can you believe that? That a parent would think that after losing a child, but it's true. Everyone has one leg in a coffin. If they aren't careful, they can easily fall in. No exceptions. I should have known that. But I didn't. I prayed that my family would be an exception. I wanted them to be there smiling at me forever. When I saw them in the hospital, something died in me. I wanted to kill the one who took my son from me. And you know, some people smile about the deaths of others. I lost all hesitation to punish those people. I thought if they were gone, it would all end. But it'll never end. I still hear someone scoffing at me, saying, You couldn't even protect your own son. It's not your fault. That's what they all say. No! That's what I really think. Then what should I have done? I always felt like such a clown. He died while I was out running around, trying to save others, so the audience just points at me and laughs. I didn't know anything anymore. Why I smiled, 
why I cried, why I got angry. I forgot how I even expressed those things. Even when I saw him dead, I didn't cry. Now it's just you. You're all I have left. I'll keep praying for a sunny day. And until then, I'll be your umbrella. Who will keep you from getting wet? I don't care if I get wet. Helena, if you give up on me someday, then I want you to just forget about me. But please, for my sake, don't leave me alone. Don't cry, Keith. I never cry. No, you're crying. You've always been crying. I'm sorry for hushing my complaints on you. I'll get stronger so I can protect you. Whatever happens, you're someone I never want to lose. I'm scared of phones ringing. I feel like someone's going to tell me about a death in the family again. Ever since then, I haven't been able to answer calls. Why'd your son die? Run over by a truck. Driver died instantly. I couldn't blame anyone. I still have idiotic thoughts. Like if I hadn't answered that call, maybe nothing would have even changed. If I'd had been with him, maybe he'd still be alive and smiling. It's completely stupid. It changed nothing. What could I have done? Sorry for grabbing you. I was just confused. Let's go. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I know that. No, you don't understand. You're clever, so you're trying to fool yourself, saying it's not my fault to convince yourself of that. But you can't fully deceive yourself. Deep in your heart, you still blame yourself. So you desperately try to protect everyone, even people you just met. Protecting people as a detective lets you make up for it. You can replace your guilt with pride and a sense of duty, but that isn't going to save you. Even if you only protect what you really feel is important, no one will blame you for it. Don't act like you know so much. I'm only doing what I should be doing. And you're deceiving yourself with it. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. Then why is my son dead? It's not your fault. Everyone has things they're powerless to help. So stop lying to yourself, please. Just forgive yourself. That's an audio change. Good God. Let's go. Okay. That was fun. Good God. What the hell? Whoa, my God. What the hell does that lead to? Now okay, you can't get to the other side. Okay. Oh. I didn't... I didn't register that this was open until I just walked in. An old video camera appears to be busted. I don't even know. Cupboards. I look at clock. I couldn't move for a second. Okay. Well, I have this now. There's tape inside. Okay. What do I do with that? For the cut of the secret room, the... Oh, good night. Goodness. Start the turn of oh boy, okay that's the Bible thingy, the Bible thingy. I know what I'm talking about. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, uh, five, seven, one, one. Yes. Oh God, why? 
Ah, oh, this is so unnerving. Oh boy. Take out the tape and play it. This seems like a good idea, right? Yeah? No? Oh. Oh god! At last, I finally got a hold of you. Oh fuck. Oh dear. Heard all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss. No matter how much I hurt you. But that's what you told her to do. But ah, uh, well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you can't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over? Or are you still scared? Well, madam, do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. Well. Say again. I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared. You think I'm scared of you? I mean, he is the boogeyman. Maybe you've spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. What were you planning once you caught me? Kill me? And then what? You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live or die was up to me. I guess that was true. And all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me. You could never kill him. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do, in all my weakness. If I can keep your attention away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. You poor, stupid little boogeyman. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead, have fun in your little world. Call yourself a villain, a monster, but I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay your hand on him! Oh no. You talk too much, madam. That's not good. That's terrible. Oh, just slightly. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Keith? Keith, what are you doing? We have to hurry. Keith, are you listening? Hey, what are you staring at? The TV. Are you asleep? Get a grip. Come on. Keith? I'm awake. Are you sure about that? David, you look for Helena. She should be near. Ah, uh, what? Huh? W what about you? W what are you gonna do? I'm going to go kill a monster. Hey! How? How, how, how am I doing that? Okay, well, I'm by myself now. That's fine. Wrong thing. Oh boy, oh boy.
Oh. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm not ready Wait, for this. Dad? Oh, hi, what? Leave the door open and don't turn out the lights in the hall. Why? The boogeyman will come. What kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. A kidnapper? Well, can't leave a guy like that on the loose. Alright, Dad will give him a good beating. <laughs> hey, Boogie, you in there? What the? Hey, let go. <sighs> Dad? Dad? Oh, look at that! Hello! Oh, hi! <laughs> he was a little tough, but I got him good. No worries, son. Old Boogie won't come for you anymore. Really? Would I lie? Apparently. <laughs> Me and Mama are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, need your stuffed bunny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the ones with the fairies. The Sandman! No, no way! I'm not a wuss, Dad. I can sleep by myself. That's the spirit. Listen, Todd. If the boogeyman comes to get you again, Dad'll beat him up. I'm not gonna let anyone mess with you or Mom. Cause you're a police officer? Cause I'm Dad. Good night, son. Aww. Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you and Mom. Good night. I love you. Oh. oh, God. Hi. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Are you trying to sing? Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Uh. Have you ever thought about it, detective? Thought you have an enemy? Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. Possibly. But you know there's something tormenting you. Always making it so, so painful. You feel like the whole world's out to make you suffer. Too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So, just making one enemy will do. I chose you as my enemy. Have I become yours? Why, though? Oh, well. Either way, we're gonna settle this right here. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Let's end this wonderful game now. Can you beat oh, this sorry. final boss and take back your beloved wife? I didn't mean to cut you off there. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Keith? <laughs> That's so funny. That is an excellent question. <laughs> Boy, you're really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? Total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. But I guess we were pretty similar after all. In a sense, it was all a lie. You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go head to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster, and I'm no paragon of justice. Final boss? Ha! Huh. A big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? But taking hostages? Always on the run? 
The only thing you can chase after is girls rumps. <laughs> you know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the elders were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram, then just leave you to the local police. Because I'm not chasing you. You just keep running from me. What I'm really chasing after. Sorry, but it ain't you. That's right. It's not you. You're my enemy. Spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away? A coward who hides in the closet and threatens kids. And your enemy? Not me either. You've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're going to be a real popular guy. I can tell. But this is a great chance. No hostages to get in the way. No one watching. So I can do whatever I like with you. Detective. Criminal. That doesn't matter now. You've done the number one thing to get on my bad side. You rang a phone. You chased after my wife's rump. That too. That alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? Oh. Oh. Um. Can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? What is happening? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have what it takes to make it over here. Uh, what? I am so confused. I have no idea how I'm supposed to defeat this guy. Oh god. Fucking hell. Huh. I thought you were supposed to be scary. Oh my gosh. Ah, fucking damn it. God damn it. This is so hard. I hate fighting things. Oh my god, I'm at 10, he's at 70. Nope, nope, god damn it. Ah, fucking damn it, god, oh my god. Is there like a trick to this? I thought you were supposed to be scary. Is this just a warm-up practice, or are you actually going to attack? 
Oh, is that it? I was just about to have fun. What the hell happened here? Oh boy. Jesus! What happened? Did I die? Is it gonna make me die? No, I won! Okay, I have no clue what happened there. The game just freaked out. Where do you think you're going, Lance? I have no clue! I'm gonna find them. They've been gone way too long. Did I die? Did you forget what he said? It'll be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all is said and done, we'll tell him we did just what he said. <laughs> of course, you might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you? Uh, we got two, maybe three corpses around here? No, oh, no, there's like a shit ton more. What part of don't, don't you get? Stop, you two. Don't fight. We'll go search together. I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. P Papa. You really want to go? No, but we're going to do this anyway, apparently. Yes, we'll be all right together. Oh, okay. And there's something I'm curious about. What's that? This whole incident may just be a great big farce. What do you mean? Let's be going. I'm so confused. Helena, where are you? Helena? Am I dead? What happened? Oh, ah. Wow, we were so close. Helena! David! Are you okay? I... That man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! Possibly dead? Possibly not? Hey, I'm alive! Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. What's in that big head of yours? What? What? Brendan? What? What? You lose. What? Detective. Keith! Hi. You're Brendan? Why? That is an excellent question! Stop moving around! Keith, Helena! Hi! We have to stop the bleeding. Lance! R Richard, help me out! S Sophie, find something to tie him with. Keith! Hi! <laughs> Got you. Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. Sounds like a good idea. No more running. No! Keith, stay with me, please! Oh no, what? No! No, no, no! Fuck. God damn it. Oh god, did I fuck up? Well, watch the ending. Uh. Yeah, the servants and Stevie. Ten people died, all told. Fucking Christ, why? I'm sure glad to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. 
<laughs> oh, bribery. Where's that money coming from? My own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep, because that's freedom of the press. But this? This is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. <laughs> I hate cops, sure, but I hate gossip too. I won't ask for money, and I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. Now quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. I just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. <laughs> Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes. But I bet you heard a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's past, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead him by the nose. He tricked you all, and tried to kill you. What a farce. But why? Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it all. That's for fucking sure, good Spent God. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. On you? Because I was going to be on that tour. Oh, that's right! We found this uh, torn pieces of paper in the basement! Oh, that's right! No wonder I thought he knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us. Saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can uh, control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Seeing right through people without any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's past and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates. So he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? Now, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. First, Brendan, or Bookie Rapper, what kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion, that's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why do you think that? When my daughter went missing, and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it, meaning she was still safe. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped, and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Oh... Because he didn't want you investigating it. He's got some keen insight. I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? N no, well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it... a doll? Right you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, 
he dropped the corpse down below so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Keefe saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I'd said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner, but I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter, even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. Well, I knew he was a fake. Because I've met the real boogeyman. Oh. So be stop it. Not this tale again. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Meeting the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder. But his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. Huh. So Boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? Uh, tell that to my little squirt. Anything else you noticed? I feel like he might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith. A little. You still think that way now? Not even. Because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, Don't worry your papa ever again. <laughs> Red paint? On his face? It was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he had a weird paint on a torn paper bag. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or many monsters? Hear any phones ringing? No, I didn't. What? But the... But, but what? No, 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 no. We saw... What? What? Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the pink. Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, <laughs> miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing, too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. There... But there was. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Nicely said. <sighs> Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. Still really want to know why. When their son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. 
Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I, I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So, even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. And last Farmer's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kids cooking, I'll be blunt, it ain't good. <laughs> but I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys, have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day, cause he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it. Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants, too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what do you say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. Oh, that makes a lot of sense now. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena, he went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? Oh, he is alive! Oh, thank God! Oh, my God. <sighs> I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Oh. Keith. Oh, he's I've crying. Always wanted to cry like this. Oh, I never forgot about him, not for a single day. And ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing. Like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe. And you came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever. Because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh. Even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad... I'll cry. First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, seems like. 
It's going to be a busy time. <laughs> it's going to be so busy. I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided. Haven't you too? We only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because it'll soon be sunny again. Oh my god. Happy end, come rain, come shine. I did it! Holy shit, I did it! Wow. Whoo! Oh yeah, I forgot we have a voice actors this time. Yay! Woo! This was... God, this was so, so weird. Okay. Remember my complaint in the last game, how the Sandman compared to the Crooked Man, it just felt such a weird turn to be like, oh, we're definitely dealing with supernatural elements and that's all this is. Um, and for them now to go to this one to go, oh, well the Boogeyman exists because Sophie actually met him to some degree. It's not the Boogeyman, it's some guy dressed as the Boogeyman. Dressed so correctly accurate to what the real boogeyman looks like you just assume it's the boogeyman but it's not it's brandon because fucking who knows but what the hell why would you change the flow the flow is just so weird i can't get a grasp on it because it's like oh it's real events with it's real events with some superstition or some some, some supernatural elements thrown in it then it's like it's full full supernatural and now it's just no it's a real person so it's like i don't know what like where to pull this from because like if it was still if it was still if the boogeyman was actually the boogeyman the supernatural boogeyman in this one and he was just doing this for shits and giggles and like we don't battle him in the end we just make him go away kind of like we did with uh the crooked man i would be fine with that i'd be I, I, it'd be a little weird, but I'd be like, okay, it still goes with the whole flow of the storyline that's being told right now. But this took such a weird turn of saying, no, it's just some dude in a mask being the boogeyman. And we know for a fact that the boogeyman is actually real since Sophie says, oh yeah, I met him once in a closet. He touched my shoulder. It was a little weird, but I'm fine. So it's, oh God, it's so strange. And then now this goes back to the horror elements this has the blood this has the gore this has the the people dying i mean this is this is done to an extreme version to like compared to the crooked man the crooked man was mild compared to this so it's like mild horror zero to nor horror except for like the one time the unicorn stabs sophie in the stomach and then it's just Death, 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 death. Just everyone dies, for the most part. Oh, hi. I forgot. I don't know why I'm always surprised by these things. Congratulations on being the boogeyman, and thank you for playing this game. Additionally, so if you played the previous two games in the series. This game was fully voiced with the help of voice actors. Due to the author's fatigue, there's no bonus scenario. But I did receive comments from each of the actors, so take the upper door if you're interested. The Something Man's- I swear to God, it's called the Strange Man series on Steam. As some has come to a turning point, the general storyline ends in the next game. Oh, that actually makes me kind of sad. I have plans for serious and silly extra chapters afterwards, so please play those if you're interested. Lastly, once more, congratulations on being in the game and thank you for playing. Why am I a sheep? Makes no sense. Hi? Hi! Oh my god. Don't watch. Oh god, that's just get away from me, please. 
Hangman, man and then this should be the sandman yep okay maybe i'll watch the bonus scenario i'm not quite sure i don't think i need to i don't know i'll i think if i save and i just close out i'll lose this but i'll finish up my thoughts real fast um this was this was good i liked this one the crooked man is still my favorite um but this one i really really did enjoy i like the storyline i like the gore i like the jump scares i like the puzzles um there's a few i'm kind of like since it's so big there was a few that it's it it took a while to figure out where exactly you're supposed to go to figure everything out it was a bit of an, an annoyance but it wasn't too terrible um i think my one minute complaint as stupid as it sounds and i'm so sorry for the people who worked on this but I didn't like the voice acting to a certain extent. Um, people, some were fine, uh, but like Helena or Helena, I don't know how they, I thought it was Helena, but like Helena and Sophie, I was not fan, I was not a fan of their voice actors, actresses that no, no jab to them, just didn't enjoy their performance. Um, and you could, I got, and you can tell, like, the quality in so You could tell there was always some shifts in, like, the quality of the sound recording. Um, and you could always tell, like, when it happened. It's like, oh, well, they need to reshoot this, but it was, like, a day later. Or there's different levels of how someone is recording something so it's like someone's using their own microphone at home kind of like what i do when i record my own stuff here someone just using their home microphone and it's not professionally done to a certain extent um and that was kind of not great it, 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 it broke me out of the suspense sometimes when i'm listening to someone talk and it's like okay i get it you're whatever it's emoting thank you i don't need this right now um but Again, it's a small nitpick, not one where I'm just kind of like, oh, this is the worst game ever now. Out of the three that I've played so far, the Sandman, again, is my least favorite. And now that I've played this and seen everything, it, it, it kind of makes me feel like the Sandman was just done just to introduce Sophie, just so there's a third party member to their, yeah, I guess, third party member who had dealt with the supernatural element that could say, I dealt with the supernatural element because I went and met the Sandman. Like, it just seems it was just put in... She was just, it was just there to add extra, to add an extra body count in case she died. I don't know. My own personal opinion, but comparing, Sandman is out. Sorry, I don't like Sandman, but comparing this and the Crooked Man, I still got to get with the Crooked Man. That's, that was done so, so well. Uh, cause it had good character, good story, good puzzles, good atmosphere, good deaths, as weird as that sounds. Good conclusion. This one wasn't bad. But now I'm really confused as to like, why did Brandon do it? Which I might, we might find out in the bonus scenario. Like, why did Brandon do it? Um, why, what, was there a moral to this? I guess it's like, you know, just don't hide things away and think just doing this one thing over and over again. Like, if there's an issue, if there's a problem that can't be resolved or something bad happens and it's like, it's not your fault, but you don't know where to turn to or like where to go to fix the problem that is not your problem to be fixed. Like maybe that's what they're trying to go for. It's, you know, it, you can only do so much maybe, but even then it's like, it's just, it feels so weird. But as it stands, we've beaten the boogeyman, both metaphorically and physically. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Tingyal90. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you are enjoying this series overall. Remember, remember my friends, to always stay animated, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, whatever it is. <laughs>
Orange juice. Very well. I'll go buy some. Thanks. Hey, when those dogs attacked me, you saved me, right? I can't imagine any other reason those dogs would fall asleep so quickly. Thanks. I'm having a great time lately. I'm getting along great with Papa and Anne, and Reagan. well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. Things are so much better than when I carried all my burden myself. Now I know... There's someone always looking out for me. Sometimes, I really miss you. You're doing okay, right? How about the other fairies? You know, I... Sorry to butt in. <laughs> Don't touch me. Brats with a thing for daydreaming aren't the most comfortable people to be around. I, I'm not daydreaming. C keep it between us, but I've met some... some fairies. <laughs> so you don't believe me? No, I do. I met one when I was a kid, too. Really? Yeah. This hobo in the area always had a head full of dandruff. So I called him the Danger Fairy. Oh yeah, and I've got a co-worker who eats non-stop cup noodles. The Cup Noodle Fairy. Want to be introduced? Why won't you believe me? A 37-year-old who believes in fairies ain't exactly socially adjusted, don't you think? But hey, if they do exist, put in a request to one of your fairy friends to get me some wings. Big, fluffy pink ones. What do you use those for? Just want some wings. Why not? Mr. Detective wanna fly away. <laughs> huh. You angry? Phew. <laughs> Better step off. One of your friends might cast a spell to turn me into a fluffy white kitty. Maybe instead of filling your head with stupid fantasies, fill in that chest a little. It's so pathetic I can't even look at it. What the hell? Ugh. What's wrong? I haven't been able to sleep since last night, even though I'm sleepy. It's weird. Hey, I wonder why! Did you God. take any medicine? God damn it. Yep. Anxiolytics. Sleepy pills. Guess they're not working. Let's talk to each other then. Before you know it, you'll be sound asleep. And it'll be morning. Don't you need to sleep? They don't have to stay up for me. It's fine. I'll stay with you until you're snoozing away. Maybe some exercise would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Was that it? Oh my god. <laughs> I'll just stick that at the end. Hi. God damn it. <laughs>